Welcome everybody. My name is Steve Friedberg and um, this Oracle Learning Library Live is a demonstration of one of four uh, trainings. There's today and then there is two, three, and four will be presented on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week. So today is going to be the Master and Work Repositories, creating those repositories using RCU, the Repository Creation Utility. And then on uh, Monday, we'll be making projects. On Wednesday, we'll be making agents. And on Friday, we'll be making uh, scenarios. So that's kind of where we're going to be going with this. This is a general disclaimer that says this is actual live code. And uh, this, is, this is shipping code, so there's nothing in here that's future facing. We assume that you have a, a database out there of some sort. This particular database has to seek it perfectly well with other databases, including non-Oracle databases. It also assumes that WebLogic Server is out there somewhere. If you have a license for it, it will use it. If you don't have WebLogic installed, installing ODI will cause WebLogic to be installed, though you don't have to be familiar with it, but it is out there, it's used by Studio. And then we assume you have some familiarity with SQL, since that's the underlying architecture for many of these um, presentations. So uh, as we mentioned, we're going to be using uh, Database 12C, and we'll be using Data Integrator 12C. Data Integrator shipped just about a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully you all saw the presentation last Tuesday, this past Tuesday, announcing formally uh, 12C for ODI as well as for Golden. So it's a GUI tool. Um, there's all kinds of drag and drop. Uh, we'll be able to see it in action. The demonstration happens to be under Linux, but it would work perfectly well under Windows as well. And uh, we're not going to do too much with the tool itself today. Uh, we're going to be preparing the repositories for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be spending a lot of time in designing topology. And then when we run the scenarios, we'll see it under operating. So those are the pieces parts. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. Um, uh, this particular demonstration is a live demonstration of the Oracle by example training, which is included with the product. If you install ODI and go to the ODI start page, right on the start page is a link to the Oracle Learning Library that contains this particular o, uh, OBE, Oracle by example. So after watching this presentation, you could do the, um, you could rewatch the presentation because it's taped, or you could do the OBE yourself by going out there and following through that. So I'm going to be working through the OBE itself, and if you happen to be following along, I'll tell you where we are in the OBE as we do it. So we already covered the prerequisites that the database is out there. Um, just to show you that there's a database out there, we've got SQL Developer running. Um, and it, as we mentioned, it happens to be 12C, but that's just coincidental. Uh, WebLogic Server is out there as well. If we look at um, what's installed under the middleware, the WebLogic Server is already installed. ODI is already installed. So we've already gone through that process, and we're getting ready to jump in and actually do the thing. So the first step in the OBE, step number 1.1, is uh, running OCU itself. So what we're going to do is um, figure out what directory we're in. We're in the home directory. And I found it useful to define a bunch of environment variables. Uh, right. found it useful to define a bunch of environment variables. And so you see that I have them out here. And this will make it easy for me to navigate back and forth. So um, to get uh, RCU started, we can go to the Fusion Middleware Home, which is based off of the Oracle Home, and then further go to Oracle uh, underscore common and then bin. And then from within there, we're going to fire off RCU, the Repository Creation Utility. And when that launches, it will start a welcome page saying, welcome to RCU. And this is the appropriate version for this particular um, uh, version of ODI. 
not a lot to do on this screen, so we'll go to next. And what we're going to do is create repositories. Um, you can create multiple repositories, but at the moment we're just going to create one. We'll come back later and drop the repository just to show you what that looks like. Uh, and then we'll come back later and create a second repository as well just to show you what that would look like. All right, so we're going to just simply hit next at this point and take the defaults. The host name that we're running on, we happen to be on the same host as ODI, so that's real easy. The default for Oracle is 1521, though your, yours may be different. And then there is an, uh, a service name, which is different than the instance name. And you know that the default is Oracle. And our host is us.oracle.com. Again, yours is going to definitely be different. And at this point, we're going to put in a user who has EBA uh, privileges. Now, keep your eye on the role down here. As I start typing, the role changes. And so I'm going to say sys. For purposes of this demo, every password is going to simply be welcome one. You won't see them. It's going to display like that. But for purposes of the demo, I decided to make all of them the same. And that way, it will make it easier for me to keep track of things. Uh, in real life, you would not do that. But this works well for purposes of the demo. All right. So then we go next. There's some housekeeping that happens. It's telling us that we are not using Unicode, and it says you really ought to be using Unicode, which is true. We really should. Um, and so the next time we set up the database, we'll probably make a point of using Unicode. At the moment, we're going to ignore that. It finishes the housekeeping pretty quickly. And so we continue and click OK. And at this point, it's ready to create a repository. You can name the repository using one of several prefixes. Uh, I can name one called uh, dev for development, one called prod for production, one called junk, one called test, one called east, one called west. You can make a bunch of repositories. We're going to just simply leave the default. And you can click either data integrator or mass repository. Whichever one you click will cause the appropriate things to be selected. So by clicking this one, it filled in all of these others. So we go and click on Next. And it does a verification for more housekeeping to make sure that everything is, is possible. We click on Next again. And uh, we, we could either make one password for all schemas, which is nice for proof of concept, but probably not a good idea for production. But simply for proof of concept, we'll put in welcome one for all of them. Uh, realistically, you would probably use different passwords for different schemas. But this will set up the schema in particular, the ODI repo schema, and we'll see that show up in a second. All right. Let me catch up here. Um, now there's going to be passwords for the ODI user. So the supervisor, and the, the name is going to be restricted to supervisor, so it's going to be called supervisor. That has a password as well. For purposes of the demo, we'll say welcome one. Repeat it again. And then you have a choice of a couple of different kinds of repositories. We can do, we can do uh, development or execution. And so we're going to simply do development. We'll put in the D. And then the name of the repository, you can be creative will be not creative and simply do what they suggest, a work repository. And then that's got a separate password from the supervisor. But again, for purposes of simplicity, we'll make everybody have the same password. And it's really violate security. I'll probably write it on a little sticky note and paste it on the front of the screen so that everybody will remember. All right, then we continue and hit next. The prefix that we had specified was dev, and you see the dev prefix uh, set up here. Uh, so these are the schema owners. The dev ODI repo is the one that we're going to spend most of the time working on. And that goes into a table space called dev ODI user, creates some additional table spaces. If these table spaces do not exist, they'll be created. Um, if they do exist, it'll simply reuse them. So we'll go ahead and hit next. There's the message that just told you what I just told you. Uh, if these don't exist, we'll go ahead and create them. And so we say, sure, go ahead and do that. 
Um, that part's fairly fast, creating the table. So obviously to create a table space, the user who's doing this needs to be a DBA, which is why I picked SIS. Um, if you have uh, other users that are DBAs but not SIS, you could do that as well. So this should take about 20 seconds. Yep, there's all done. And so this is just a summary of what we're about to do. We haven't actually done anything yet. We've created the table spaces, and we haven't, we haven't yet created the repository, but we're about to. So in summary, it's on host, local host, uh, the default port for the database, uh, the service name of the database, which is different than the instance. I'm connected as sys, not shown is as sysdba, and the operation is going to, I'm going to create and load the repository at the same time in the prefix is dev. So we say create, and off it goes. Uh, this phase takes quite a bit of time. It takes about four minutes to do this whole phase. Uh, while that's running, just to let you know, the master work repository takes about four minutes to create. Meanwhile, the master and work repository are being created and populated. Um, it's populated with a number of technologies. Uh, for instance, all of the knowledge modules for how to operate uh, or a database, SQL Plus, et cetera, those are all being populated. And there it is. It took about four minutes right on the nose. If you're curious, we can... Um, if you're curious, we can go and look at the logs of what was created. Um, the one that we're most interested in is the master and work repository, and that works pretty much the way you'd expect. We can interact with that directly. All right, so that completed OBE step 1.1. 1 .1. Um, the repository is now created. If you're following along in the OBE, the next step is deleting the repository. However, we're not going to do that right now because that would undo the thing we just did. So we're going to skip 1.2, deleting repositories, and we'll come back and do that later once we're completely done. So we will skip down to 1.3, which is verifying schemas using SQL Developer. This is optional, we, we've already done it, but I thought you might be curious to see what's out there. So if I connect to the database using a DBA, um, DBA account, connecting to the database, waiting for the connect. Uh, give, me a, give me a page here. Okay, we can see a couple of interesting things. If I look at schema version registry, and if I could spell correctly, uh, at this point it's not helping. Here we go. Schema version registry. You can see what got created. Um, in particular, there we go. In particular, for ODI, we created a master and work repository with a prefix of dev. Uh, ODI repo is name and type. Uh, dev ODI repo is a schema name, version, valid, all of that kind of good stuff. So there's a number of interesting things that we can see from that. Uh, if you're curious, we also could do something like select count from all tables where owner equals dev ODI repo. And that may give us an idea of what other interesting things are out there. Turns out there's 220 tables that were created as part of this repository. So they're all out there in the database. It doesn't have to be an Oracle database. It would work perfectly well as a MySQL database. But with all that stuff out there, um, we can back it up using uh, import or export, making an Oracle dump file or we can back it up using uh, XML, two different ways to do that, and we'll see that in, a little bit later in the, in the demo. Okay?
So that completes section one. Let's just leave that in the background there. And now what we want to do is we want to go on to section two, which is connecting to the repository using Studio. So we'll leave that RCU just where it is, and we'll go to Studio. So looking at uh, ODI Home, again, I have a variable defined, ODI Home. It's not required to create this variable, but it makes it handy to do so. And then from there, I can go to the studio. And from there, I can launch ODI shell script. And we see that. Lovely little splash screen. Now, the very first time that you run this, and only the first time you run this, it will ask you about uh, previous ODI installations. And we haven't got any, but it doesn't know that, so it will ask us anyway. And so it's going to ask, would you like to import preferences from a previous ODI? Well, here's the previous ones it's got, which is none. So we'll say, no, thank you. Uh, this, the subsequent times you run, you're not, you're not going to see that pop up. So it continues to load, continues to build things. Again, verifying it's 12.1.2. And here is the welcome to ODI. Uh, it turns out, right on the splash page, creating, connecting to ODI master and work repositories, this is what we're doing right this minute. Uh, this is what we're going to do on Monday. This is what we're going to do on Wednesday, and this is what we're going to do on Friday. So you can come back in and see these uh, at your leisure, and then when you're done, you can say thank you. Don't bother showing that anymore. So the first thing you need to do in every case is connect to a repository. Uh, if you look at the designer or the operator or the topology or any of those pages, it says before we do anything else, you've got to connect to a repository. So we will say fine, let's do that. So we're going to connect to repository. The first time, it doesn't know where it is, so we're going to start with a plus. Technically, uh, these two things, the edit and delete, should be grayed out because there's nothing to edit and nothing to delete yet. But we'll, we'll just humor them and we'll click on the plus. And uh, this is the information that we put in from the RCU that we just finished, the repository creation utility. So remember, the login name is dev ODI repo. That's the schema we created. The user is supervisor. And the password we said was going to be welcome one for everybody. Um, the schema is dev ODI repo. Uh, actually, I lied to you. This, this must be dev ODI repo. This could be anything. However, a good convention is, if I create a repository with the schema name of that, then I'm going to log into ODI. It would just be convenient to log in with the name of the schema. So this does not have to match that, but it ought to. So this is from RCU. This we make up out of our head, but why don't we use the same thing? So we'll continue on with the password. The driver list. Uh, this is the kind of the database that we're talking to. So you can see here, these are the supported databases for using repositories, and ours happens to be Oracle. The um, URL for JDBC is of this form, and that's actually our only choice. So we'll say yes. And again, this matches what we did for the RCU. So the host is localhost. Now, it's very hard to see, but there's a colon there. You need to make sure that you don't get rid of the colon. The port is 1521. Again, there's a colon there. And the SID is Oracle. So it's very hard to see, but there's, there's two colons separating the ports there. And this information matched what we did in the RCU. Lastly, we're going to attach a master work repository to a, uh, sorry, a master repository to a work repository. You can have several work repositories for a given master. For instance, the master may define the topology 
saying I have physical servers one, two, and three. And then the work repository might be dev and prod. So um, at the moment, we're going to assume we only have one work repository, so there's not a lot to choose from here. I click on the uh, magnifying glass. The only one we created was work rep. We're going to create a second one in a minute. So I select it. It fills that in. And if I had multiple work repositories, I could pick which one of these is the default. So a particular connection has a master and a particular work repository. Um, we naturally want to test this to make sure that everything we type is valid. So it's going to go out and see that that schema exists and that the password is valid. By the way, you notice there's stuff happening in the background. So we say, okay, keep, you may want to keep your eye on stuff happening in the background there. We'll look at that in a minute. We'll then say, okay, and it saves all this information that we just created. And we have the option of storing these passwords in a wallet. Uh, wallets have been around for a while, but they're now in a lot more fashion in 12C. Golden Gate uses wallets, ODI uses wallets, database uses wallets. And the password for the wallet is going to be the same one that we're using for everybody else. Welcome one. Type it again. And it's going to store supervisor uh, user logon in the wallet. I have the option of doing it uh, without the wallet, but why not use the wallet? So I hit OK. And now supervisor and the password is stored in the wallet. And after I sign into the wallet, the supervisor and password will always be pre-populated on this login. So I only have one choice to choose from, but I could make a second one, and there it is. So I click on OK. It creates a connection, and then it's going to populate all this stuff over here. Okay, so now that this has been populated, you see I have physical things in my topology. Nothing has run yet, but if they do, they're going to run over here. Nothing's been designed yet, but when we do, it's going to show up over here. Okay, so that is connecting to the repository. Um, that completes 2.1. Let's create a second repository in 2.2. So what we're going to do to create, a, by the way, this is all you have to do. So from a mandatory standpoint, we're basically done. In an optional standpoint, let's go back to our SQL developer here, and we want to create another user. So I'm going to, going to still sign on as DBA, create a user named dev ODI repo. Remember I had dev ODI repo, I'm going to make dev ODI repo 2. Then to by my favorite password. And when we run that, we now have a new user created. Okay. And then just to simplify things, we're going to give him full privileges to do everything. Uh, obviously, you would restrict that in real life to something a little bit more um, subdued. But that's, that's good enough for our purposes. Um, they do need permissions to access all of the tables that you're going to be moving from source to target. So it's, if it's not a DBA, it's certainly something pretty close to a DBA. OK, so now that Dev ODI Repo 2 exists, let's flip back to uh, Data Integrator, and we're going to create some additional repositories. OK, so if we go back to Topology, and we look at repositories, we already have uh, a master repository, which we just created. Not a lot to see on that. This is the information on the master repository we just created. If we look at the work repositories, we've got one called work rep, um, and it has an ID associated with it. It's development as opposed to execution. And uh, it's got a password. OK, so that's what exists. What we'd like to do is we'd like to make a new repository. And maybe this one, instead of development, might be production. So we click on New Repository. And it's going to ask us very similar questions to what we had before. Um, it's going to be 
on the same database, so we'll stick with Oracle, same JDBC driver. Uh, it remembered the URL, so that's fine. The difference is right here, we say that it's dev ODI repo 2, and that matches the user that we created. Uh, the password happens to be the same. Let's test that. Okay, so it can reach dev ODI repo 2. That's good. Then if we continue on, um, it says that the host that we're connecting to is using uh, something that is not universally recognized, meaning it's not an actual IP address in local host. And it says that's not a great idea uh, because if I try to do this from some other place, um, some other client coming in, it's not gonna resolve local host correctly. So this is a valid warning. However, for purposes of this, uh, purposes of this test, we can ignore that. But it is something to think about in production, all right? So um, we have a name for this thing, the work repository. We can call it whatever we want. Um, we'll call it, actually let's call it work rep two to match everything else we've been doing. The password needs to match what we set up for the um, schema. And again, it's a type development or execution. You pick whatever you want. And then when we hit finish, you'll see stuff happening in the background. And chug, chug, chug. Creating the repository. Since we're only making a work repository and not a master repository, it will go much faster than the four minutes we saw before. Want to create a logon? Sure. We'll use the same idea. You can make it anything you want, but it would be logical to name it um, the same as the schema. And it's going to store that login in the wallet along with the other login. And there we go. We now have work rep and work rep two. So work rep has some sort of an ID. Work rep two. has a different ID. And we don't really care what the ID is, just so long as it's a different. And um, now, the next time we log in, we can uh, pick which uh, repository we want to use. So just to show you that real quick, we will disconnect. Oops. We will disconnect. And then when we come back in to connect, by the way, this here is the exact same thing as this here. So we're going to connect. The wallet password is welcome one. And in my wallet, I have a choice of repo or repo two. So I'm going to pick repo. I mean, why not? And then all of the passwords are stored in the wallet. It fetches the information from the wallet and we're back in. Okay. So that completes topic two. Topic three is importing into these repositories. So you have several options. Um, if I look at the designer, you see there's currently nothing in any of the projects. And similarly, there's nothing in any of the models. I might have developed some useful projects and some useful models from some other um, previous uh, repositories. Similarly, if I look under my technologies, and I look under Oracle, look under Oracle, And I look under, uh, well, it would be right here. There would be databases showing up if there were any. And since there aren't any, it would be useful to import some. So what we're going to do is we're going to ignore all of this for a second. And topic 3.1 is how to import uh, into a master repository from a previous repository. So the way we do that is we go to here. Uh, this is at the top bar for topology. And we'll pick import. Then it's going to say import what? We're going to import a master repository. And so you'll see we're going to do work repository next. We could import subsets of that. So to import a master repository, uh, we could import from a zip file. Alternatively, since all this is doing is really putting stuff into the database, we could do a, um, a, a dump file and do a, an import using the database tools. We're using the ODI tools, and it will accomplish the same thing. 
The difference is the zip file contains XML versus the database import export would contain a dump file. So it turns out I have some from a previous experiment that I did. And so I have a ODI master repository zip file. Uh, will it give me the details about this? Yeah, it's kind of biggish. It's 2 meg. Uh, but that's what I'm going to import, this 2 meg file. So I'm going to say open. And um, this doesn't come with the product. This would be from a previous install. So you would have this after you have successfully installed ODI. You could export to a zip file. And this is the one I want to bring in. So I'm going to say import. And then it goes off and it does it. Um, since this is 2 meg, this is fairly lengthy. It takes about two minutes to do this. All right. And then the, uh, the import is probably almost done. Uh, as we saw, um, it was 2 meg of XML. So if you have a bigger or smaller import, it will take longer or shorter. Um, it turns out that the database import using the dump file is much, much faster. The problem is um, if you dump from an 11G database and try to bring it into a 12C database, it might be a different format. And so the import export through XML zip file is recommended in cases where there's a mismatch of version type. When we get to the um, importing of the work repository, that's much, much faster. Let me just see if there's any questions still out there. Uh, can the IDs or work repository names be changed after they've been created? Um, the IDs are, they, the IDs used to be picked by you in version 11, and in version 12, they use something called a GUID, a globally unique ID. And those IDs are picked by the system. So uh, you cannot change them, and the system will try to keep them unique. However, the names can be changed. Um, as far as changing the names, the I know for sure what you could do is export it and import it into a new name. So that's one option. I'm not sure if you can alter the name in place. The issue is that uh, there's all kinds of referential integrity going on in terms of projects that are using those names and scenarios that are using those projects. And so changing, changing a name would be a rather horrific process. But worst case, you can always export it and then import it into a new name. Uh, effectively duplicating the structure and then getting rid of the first one. Import from 12C to 12C or 11C to 12C. Um, when you say import, again, there's two flavors of import. There's import using the database dump file and import using the XML. It turns out that what I happen to be doing here is using XML on importing from an 11G ODI into a 12C ODI. So it's uh, doing the conversion necessary for, for that process to happen. Um, the other thing is that if you are watching this import here, which is equivalent to watching paint dry, there's no, um, there's no click here to continue. Once it's done, it just pops immediately into the, con into the summary screen. So uh, you'll have to keep your eye on it. And should be done, you know, this is like watching water boil here. If I, if I say it should be done, then it's going to take longer. There we go. Okay, so let's see, let's dismiss the polling and see what it is that we brought in. So we brought in a bunch of logical schemas and a bunch of physical schemas. And um, I can't, there we go. And if I look down here, we can see the various things we brought in. There's a bunch of physical schemas, there are appropriate logical schemas. And all this stuff should show up. If I go back over to physical architecture here, oh, let's, let's dismiss this. If I go back over to physical architecture here, now something showed up that wasn't there before. I don't know if you remember, but there were only initially data types, actions, index types. This was one of the things we imported. Okay, so that's how we import a master repository. Similarly, we could import a work repository, which is going to look like the exact same thing, except it's different stuff. So did master before, now we do work. Um, instead of the M rep, we pick the W rep, just the naming convention. You can name it whatever you want. That's certainly a good name. 
from the zip file, ready, set, go. This should take much faster since it's much smaller and importing fewer things. So these would be things like uh, particular mappings, which used to be called uh, interfaces, particular scenarios, particular procedures, things like that. Uh, similarly, the master and work repository are both just uh, database tables, so we could have done it using the XML, which is what we did, or we could have done it using the database. Both work equally well. Okay, so we imported a bunch of marker groups, which are used later on. We'll see those. A bunch of knowledge modules. By the way, there's um, a bunch of built-in knowledge modules in 12C, so we use those less frequently bunch of data stores, which refer to a particular table. So we, we brought in a bunch of stuff. Okay, so that was uh, concluding topic three. The last thing, topic four, is testing the repository connection. If I go to look at repository, oops, repository connection information, it will tell me uh, in a display only way that I am connected as ODI repo supervisor to the Oracle database at localhost 1521, et cetera, and my work repository is work rep. So uh, this presumes that I've already got an active um, configuration, and because it's active, it cannot be changed. I can see uh, similar things in that dialog box. If I wanted to edit it, what I could do is I could go back to where we were before. I could disconnect. Now I'm no longer connected. And when I come back to connect and I open up the wallet, uh, instead of just connecting, I can click on the pencil. And this gives me the option to look at all of the parameters and pain points. This is the same screen we saw before with two significant additions. One is I can change them, and two is I can test stuff. So for instance, if I were to make a mistake and then click on test, it says bad credentials, and it'll tell me why. What that really says is the supervisor doesn't exist. So then I can go back and fix it and test it, and then it works. So this is uh, a possible way of testing the um, uh, RCU connection information. So we'll say OK. And uh, lastly, if you look behind this, when you do testing, you'll see that there's other information going on. And in particular, there is something about leaked connections. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but something about this particular host um, it's only a warning, it's not an error, but there's other things that you'd want to test. You might want to look behind the studio for those messages to see if there's other stuff you need to deal with. Okay, so that concludes the mandatory part. Let's uh, disconnect, as we actually were already disconnected. Uh, let's go and do a removal. We promised we would do that and we skipped that before. So the last piece that we skipped was moving an RCU. If I look at the OBE, it was step 1.2 that we skipped, which was how to delete a repository. So uh, we come back in and we restart RCU. But instead of doing a create, we're going to come back in and do a delete. Welcome. Now, obviously, you wouldn't do this in production because it's going to get rid of everything. So you could have backed it up, or you could have done a, a, an export to a, a zip file or dumped it or something like that. But if I want to go in and do a drop of a repository, it's the same local host, 1521. This is the same process exactly. Um, this, okay, so this is the exact same screen we saw before, making sure that that's legit. And now it says uh, you have a choice of prefixes. There's one prefix out there named dev, which has these following things in it. And if I had uh, prod or junk or test, 
I could pick which of the RCUs to delete. And so I'm going to delete the dev one, which is going to take out uh, ODI, master and work repository, as well as the security services. So I'm going to say, yep, go ahead, let's remove that, just so I see what it looks like. Validates that everything I asked for is proper. And then it's going to actually do it. Um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop everything with a prefix of dev. And so I click on drop. And the drop goes much faster than the create, as you would expect. Let me just take a peek at the time it should take. Oh, all told, it's less than a minute. Um, the longest one is OPSS, and that's only 22 seconds. So we can wait. We can wait 30 seconds to expand. The reason you might want to do this is uh, if you had a bad uh, repository that you created incorrectly, or a project you're no longer using, there might there might be reasons to get rid of it. Or more importantly, if you were doing a test machine and you wanted to just clean everything off uh, without destroying the database, um, RCU will remove the pieces of the schema and the table faces that you need. And of course, if there's dependencies, in other words, if I had a dev and a prod, it would be smart enough to leave the table space and just remove the tables if I was removing dev and retaining prod. Uh, in this case, there's no other repository, so it will go ahead and drop the table places as well. And there we go. So RCU in a minute and a half cleaned up after itself, and we have removed the dev uh, repository. If I want to prove that to myself, I can go back in here. I can click on the schema registry that we had. And And when we run that, we see that it's empty. So in fact, I did in fact remove all of the pieces of RCU. Okay, lastly, um, if I want to completely clean up the machine, I did the RCU. Uh, let me just show you what a deinstall of ODI looks like if you're curious. Oracle Universal Installer, binaries, and the deinstaller is pretty quick. This would be used if you were going to clean up the machine before you gave it off back to somebody else. The reason you would do a deinstall instead of um, just simply wiping out subdirectories is that there's an Oracle inventory file, Aura inventory, and this properly updates the inventory to reflect that the mm -hmm. file's been removed as opposed to just simply erased. So we'll wait for that to open up. Do next. Next, next, next. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it says, uh, these are the things I found. If, if the WebLogic server was out here as well, that would be an optional thing to be installed. So I can go ahead and do the deinstall from, uh, it's going to update or inventory, as I mentioned, from Oracle Home. So we go ahead and click deinstall, and it runs pretty quickly. It takes about 15, 20 seconds. And then once that's done, um, we've cleaned up after ourselves. The optional things to do, you can see them in the background. The optional thing is that in your home directory, uh, dot .odi, a hidden directory, contains the wallet. You can remove that as well. And then there are some log files you can remove as well. So those are optional uh, if you're interested in, um, in completely cleaning up. While this finishes doing its deinstall, we'll uh, give you a chance to answer that while the deinstall is finishing. By the way, you'll be a little curious. It'll say 100% and not actually be done yet. That's kind of bothered me a couple of times. So even though, now it says next, but I don't know if you noticed, there was about a five second lag between 100% and next. So we'll click on uh, done. Successfully deinstalled ODI. And then the last thing we need to do to clean up after ourselves is we said we were gonna do a get rid of the wallet, 
And then we're going to get rid of the directory that contains some other log files. And then last but not least, it created a directory for today and we're going to clean up after that. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, this concludes our webcast. Thank you all for attending and have a great rest of the day.